Hey, Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This is an episode of my series called Make It A Chord Melody. In this lesson, we are going to take the song Misty, classic standard jazz tune, and we are going to make it a chord melody. Check out the whole series. There's a link in the description to check out all the videos in this series where we've done a lot of jazz chord melody improvising as well as arranging in the series so far. We also did a couple lessons on non-jazz tunes, Long Black Veil and Don't Think Twice by Bob Dylan to show how we could do chord melody arrangements over triads and simpler songs with chords that are just one, four, and five. Uh, back to jazz in this lesson. Let's do this on Misty. It's going to be a really lovely arrangement. Let's dive in. So let's just get the melody and harmony in our ears for a second. You can see the chords on the screen. Those chords will highlight as the backing track plays, and I'm just going to play the melody over it. Then after that, we will get a chord shape for every instance of the melody, and I'll show you diagrams on the screen when we do that. But let's just hear this first. So here is the melody. That's just the A section. The A section repeats, and the second time it lands on an E flat chord and resolves the melody, but we'll just worry about getting this first part arranged. Let's talk about this chord progression for a minute just to see what we can learn from it. We have E flat major is the key, and then we have this going out of the key. This is a 2 5 to the 4 chord. So, really, this is just E flat major to A flat major 7 and we have a 2-5 leading to that 4 chord, which is a very common movement. This is how jazz harmony is different than popular harmony usually. A popular harmony might play triad, two measures, and then move to that 4 chord. Well, no, jazz harmony not only is adding the 7, but doing this out of the key 2 to 5, you know, all the time to target the next chord, even though this A flat major is in the key. Let's look at this. We have a 2, 5, again, A flat minor 7 to D flat 7, going back to E flat. That's called a backdoor dominant, this flat 7 of where we're going to, whole step below where we're resolving to. So that's very interesting uh, motion. If you don't know what I mean by all that, don't worry about it. Just stuff I wanted to point out. Well, let's do the fun part. I'm going to take just every note of the melody and show you the chord shape on the screen that I would use to harmonize it to make it a chord melody. And in this series, I go into depth on some of the thinking and process behind how I do this. And I'll say some of that here, but watch all the videos in the series if you want to have a more complete understanding of where I'm coming from. So this first note, if I'm gonna harmonize it, and in the end, you, you can play any part of the melody without a chord, but I still am always going first through and harmonizing every note of the melody with a chord shape. So this is root on top, B flat dominant seven shape. That's the first one. Next one is this note here. Instead of playing it over there, I'm gonna play it here and I'm gonna do B flat 13. Okay, so little clunky, but we don't have to play that later. You can hear the harmony already kind of functioning as something. You're hearing the melody and harmony at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna play this voicing for that first um, note on the first beat of E flat major. This is just an E flat major seven, one, three, five, seven. Okay, so now we have. Ah, already sounds so lovely. And then next we have. Okay, now these two notes are during E flat major still. Now on the guitar, we really have to figure out the vocabulary of our um, shapes for off of the top three strings. What are we gonna do anytime? Like this note right here, the five, this is the five of E flat. How can I have a chord shape that harmonizes that and functions Functionally speaking, check out my video on functional harmony. Um, it's really good to explain how different qualities of chords can actually function as uh, the same thing as something else, which is kind of what we're doing here. What I'm concerned about with a chord shape, I've said this in the series in other videos, is that it has the, the guide tones in it, the seven and the three, or the six and the three. So check this out. I'm gonna use this shape to harmonize this melody note over E flat. That doesn't sound like E flat major at all. It sounds like G minor. 
because this is one, five, flat seven, flat three of G minor seven, if you wanted to think of it that way, but we're thinking of it as E flat, which is totally accurate. If a bass player way below this range played an E flat note, it would sound like E flat major seven. And during a chord melody, I'm not concerned about what's on the bottom. And now, it really works, it really sounds right. This is a little more straightforward. This is D flat, and the chord change goes to B flat minor seven, as you can see on the chord chart there. So we're just gonna play a straight up B flat minor seven shape. Same shape as this, but we called this E flat major seven. And this, same shape, we're calling B flat minor seven, because that's the root, that's the five, that's the flat seven, that's the flat three. Check out my chord theory series for how to make sense of, you know, why can this shape be a different chord than the same shape over here? My chord theory series walks through a ton of great stuff. There's a link in the description, check that out. So now let's listen to that. Okay, it works. Now I'm gonna go up here. This is the next melody note and I'm still on B flat minor. So this is the shape. This is a B flat minor shape where the nine is on top as the melody. And we have the flat three and we have the flat seven in the chord, which is important. Okay, now this melody note, the chord changes to E flat seven, as you can see on the chord chart, but this melody has to stay there. And that's the shape. Now, I've talked about this in other places in the series too. There is a lot of vocabulary, but I try to systematize it as much as I possibly can. If ever my melody is on the top string and the harmony is a dominant seventh chord and the melody happens to be the six of that chord, Anytime that's the situation, six of a dominant seventh chord and I can play on the top string, I'm always going to use this shape. One of my favorite shapes and one of my favorite sounds. It can be used for several things, just like we saw this and this or different chords. I'm just emphasizing that it seems like a lot to get this stuff down, but along the way we pick up these things that are resources for the rest of our lives, right? This is the shape I'm gonna use and I use it all the time. In this series, I talk about improvising with these chords by mapping out these exact shapes and playing uh, melodies that way. So uh, the combination of working out the scales and improvising and arranging, we can start to see how it is a language. Okay, so we have... Okay, the next melody note goes here, and I'm just gonna use this root position shape of E flat dominant seventh. The next melody note goes here, which is the root of E flat, and we're still on E flat dominant seven. We're only, we're only on the second measure. This is the shape I will use. This is the flat seven, the three, the 13, and the root. Learn that from Wes Montgomery. That's the shape he uses in his chord melodies when he has to play the root uh, on the second string of a dominant seventh chord, chord melody, right? Uh, let's do it from the beginning. So we hear it coming together. And you'll see later we're going to arrange it where when there's all that space, I might fill in the accompaniment a little bit like this. Melody. So when there's space, I might play the melody first and then add the chords underneath so it takes up that space. But back to this. the next chord. This is A flat major seven with third on top. So this is one, five, so major seven, three. Okay, you could also do this as a shell voicing. Check out my shell voicings video if you want to know about that. Um, so I like to fill it out here with the full chord. One, five, seven, three. Okay, now we have a kind of a, a fast run. This, by the way, the melody of the tune is just seven, one, three, five, seven of the chord that it's on, which is A flat major seven, which is worth noting that mapping out our chord tones of various chord types will help us see those things uh, quicker. Okay, it's a fast run that happens with triplets. So how do we do that with chords? Maybe these first two without a chord. And I'll use this shape and then this shape and then this shape. 
and it just works really nicely because this note is the major seven of A flat and the next melody note goes to this note here, which is the two of A flat minor seven. You can see that measured there, A flat minor seven. So if you're confused at all, feel free to just look at the chord shapes and um, study the song, you know, look it up in the real book or, you know, do whatever you need to do. You can just use these chord shapes uh, regardless of what I'm saying. <laughs> So now we had A flat minor seven. And I'll just point out here that this is already reused from up here. Same shapes, minor seven with the nine on top, dominant seven with the six on top, then to five, same thing here. Minor seven, nine on top, down to the root, dominant seven with six on top. So. I said before how you're going to reuse it a bunch. Well, already two measures later, we're, we're reusing it, which is awesome. Okay, now to E flat major seven, third on top. We're on the second line of the chord sheet. And now this note here, if you watch my improvisation video where we improvise with chord melodies, that's the four note from the major seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. I don't harmonize that with major seven. I play diminished seven, so. Okay, next up is still, we're going. Okay, so here's the shape I would use. I love this shape. This is like a quartal chord shape. Check out my quartal chords video. It's an in-depth explanation of this type of harmony. So this I'm thinking of is E flat major. It is E flat major seven. This is the third or E flat major six. This is the third, this is the six, this is the nine, this is the five. So it has three and six in it, which are those guide tones that we need. Okay, so we have. This is C minor seven. I'm choosing to take this five away and have it be 11. Okay, and then the next melody notes are gonna be this. Okay, this might look like an E flat major seven chord, I'm actually thinking of it as C minor seven with this is the flat three, this is the flat seven, this is the nine, this is the five. Okay, here's F minor seven. With the melody as the third on top. And we jump all the way down to this F minor seven. Five on top. Then we go to B flat dominant seven. Third on top as part of the melody four on top, which I like the dominant seven sus four sound there. The end of the A section, that note goes up there and you can see that we have G minor, C seven, F minor seven, B flat seven in the chords. This melody rings throughout all of those. So I'm gonna play this inversion. This is G minor seven, uh, third inversion. And then I'm gonna go to make it C seven, just that one note moves. That's voice leading. Check out my video all about voice leading. But this, ah, oh, it's amazing. That's a two five, that's G minor, G minor seven to C seven, but having this melody ringing on the top the whole time, right? So I'm just moving that over to make it C seven and C seven with a nine. And then F minor seven, I'm gonna keep this on top. It's hard to keep it ringing that long. Then B seven, and then we're back at the beginning. But let's listen to that there. Okay, this died out. I didn't mute it. It's actually quite difficult to not mute it, but you want it to ring as long as it can. So the ringing of it died out, but we, I could keep it there while I played all those other chords. And then we can go back to the beginning. Second time goes 
melody resolves to the note E flat. We'll just play a triad there for now. Okay, so lots of chord shapes um, going through that melody. Again, that should be beneficial if you're familiar with this tune. And if you're not, then check out this tune and get it and get it down, get it in your ears, listen to versions of it, uh, learn the melody, learn the chords, and then come back to this video to uh, check it out again and see how cool it is that we have harmonized this melody with all of those chord shapes that I just gave you. Now that's still a pretty clunky version. I've talked about this clunky version <laughs> throughout this series where I am putting a chord shape on every single melody note. And then I'm going to just via aesthetic preference and just, you know, intuition and vibe of it, where do I want to not play chord shapes and maybe let the melody be more free and loose. And you can do that. Um, you can get really sparse with the chords. You know, I played before I came back in with a chord, right? So I like still filling it out with chords quite a bit. I might go... Um... Play a melody first, then fill in the chord. I do like this. So no chords on that. A lot of times my version of the arrangement when I make it more musical for myself is to play the melody first where I can and then fill in the chord underneath because it separates the harmony and the melody in this nice arrangement uh, approach. I keep talking while I'm playing, so I'm just going to purely play the arrangement that we just made and I will make a few choices to have it be more sparse like we talked about. <laughs> back around but second time it would go and land back on that E flat chord I'll be perfectly honest that's a difficult thing to figure out how to teach you know what's the best way to go about it but I hope you agree that the end result is really really nice especially if you like the sound of jazz and jazz harmony and jazz guitar and those seventh chords um, I just absolutely love that end result. So teaching it to you here with just chord shape by chord shape. Um, other times in the past, I've used tabs and notation. And in fact, I have a free solo guitar arrangement pack that has chord melodies in it with tab and notation, uh, totally free to download. You can get that with the link in the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon. If you're interested in this topic and you haven't seen the other videos from this series, check out those other videos. I'll put a link to the series on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube, or you can go to the description to go to the playlist of the full series here, the series called Make It a Chord Melody. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week, we're doing another chord melody video for this series, one more for now, and then I'll add to it slowly over time. Next week, we're gonna do Stella by Starlight, which I've done before showing notation and tabs, and Stella by Starlight, the chord melody arrangement, is in the free solo guitar arrangement pack that you can get, and I talked about executing it and playing it as an arrangement before next week, next video, I'm going to talk about how I came up with the chord voicings according to my kind of formula and rules that I'm talking about throughout this series. So it's a beautiful tune. If you don't know it, check it out. And either way, I hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.